Hey one hey all, welcome to Monday, welcome to Countdown Day, and today we're going to talk about death. I know, it sounds dark, stick with me. We're going to talk about the top 10 Transformers deaths, as voted on by fans all across social media. That's going to be our topic, this time around, in the latest GotBot Counts Down. Hey, one hey all, welcome back to the channel. I am your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share. Of course, subscribe, and while you are at it, light him up, baby. Hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton, and it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that is in the description down below. Also in the description down below, and if you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we have to offer to you through Spring, or of course hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member. And this is, as voted on by fans, the most impactful Transformers deaths. Now I said most impactful because in certain cases, depending on the character, it may elicit very different feelings. Depending on the character, you may be glad that they are no longer in the fiction, or you may be sad that they are no longer in the fiction. This was a very challenging one because for a number of characters, their appearances in different fictions have led to their demise in different ways that have elicited different feelings. So this one kind of, whereas usually I lump a lot of fiction together under a character, this time it did kind of have to be character and um, continuity specific, if you will. I think that it was an interesting one. There were a lot of votes, of course. We will come back after the list is done, and I'll go over some of the other ones that had votes and did not rank. But before we get to the ones that did rank, we do have one honorable mention. And that one honorable mention is Transformers Prime Cliff Jumper. I mean, yeah, a lot of people will look at Cliff Jumper and say, man, like he was taken out so early and so brutally. But in the short time that Cliff was a part of Transformers Prime. He really had a character that established himself as rugged, rough, tough, confident, capable, even though he didn't get a chance to show it a lot. That's an honorable mention. It's not on the list. You know what we're going to do. By the way, I'll mention this now. The top two separated by one vote. One vote. The voting was wildly close and fast and furious for this entire list. So without any further ado, we're gonna kick things off with number 10, first. Number 10 actually relates to a character who is soon to get an update. Not yet, but very soon. And it's this guy, Transformers Prime Dreadwing. Um, this is the Deluxe Beast Hunters version, which I actually like, to be honest with you. Uh, Dreadwing, kind of became the second in command of the Decepticons uh, and the kind of commander of the Seekers after Starscream fell out, fell out of favor with Megatron. Once Starscream got back in favor with Megatron and returned to the fold, Dreadwing here wasn't able to let go of bitterness he and resentment he held towards Starscream for the passing of his brother Skyquake as well as then the further desecration of his body by reanimating him as a zombie. In his attempt, we'll say, at revenge, uh, Megatron intervened and he warned Dreadwing not once, but twice to step down because the only way the Decepticons could win is if they stayed united. Dreadwing could not look past the desecration of his brother, could not look past Starscream. So in the end, it was his leader himself, Megatron, who picked up Dreadwing's discarded blaster and shot him through the chest with his own discarded blaster. It was brutal, it was swift, and it was unpredictable. And all Megatron's final reaction was, to Starscream, don't make me regret taking out my second-in-command. Very impactful. For some people, shocking. For some people, sad. But very few of us will remember that hole in the chest of Transformers Prime Dreadwing. And for that reason, he takes the number 10 slot. Number 9 takes us to the wacky gobbledygook hard to understand world of IDW. Gosh, that fiction's so bad. And Ravage. 
Um, I'm not gonna lie, I tried to do research. I know Tarn done something to him. Um, I can't even understand the summaries of what happened. I, I think he got torn in half or something, and I, I don't know, I guess they took around the upper half of his body until he died, and he puts his hand on, or his paw on Megatron's chest, and it looks like Megatron's probably a fixed turns mask over the Autobot symbol on his chest and Ravage says don't turn back and then he dies. Uh, a lot of people say it's the saddest, I don't get it, I, I can't, I, I gotta be honest, I'm not even sure if I'm summarizing it properly, I find IDW so unreadably bad and so poorly edited or written that honestly I'm not gonna lie to you guys. The vote at number 9 is IDW Ravage at the hands of Tarn. I don't know the story well enough and I can't understand the summaries well enough to know exactly what happened, but Ravage takes the number 9 slot. Number 8 takes us back to Transformers Prime and I do know this one because it's Bumblebee. Remember at the kind of at the end of the series Bumblebee ends up getting taken out by Megatron if I'm not mistaken and he falls from the Omega Lock or whatever it was in the sky and we all think, "Oh no, Bumblebee is gone." And it certainly seemed that way, and we saw his eyes close and the energon go out of his body and whatnot. And yeah, he was done. Little did we know that he had landed um, in like an energon bath that was going to like revitalize him, and he would actually be the thing that would take out Megatron. It was beautifully written, elegant, because we had the shock and awe of Bumblebee. Then you had, for those that are fans of Bumblebee, the joy of his return, and we had his evolution in that scene from scout to full class warrior who was even able to best the mighty Megatron. Nevertheless, the moments before he came back to life when it was believed that the heroic Bumblebee had been smited by the Decepticon leader, yeah, it was definitely impactful, even if short-lived. The death of Bumblebee in Transformers Prime, as short as it was, offered a huge impact and it took the number eight slot. Number seven was preceded by the line, open, damn it, open. Prime, you said that the Matrix would light our darkest hour. And it didn't for Ultra Magnus. Yeah, Ultra Magnus was um, ripped apart <laughs> uh, into bits and pieces. In Transformers the movie, we know, of course, that the Junkions later were able to rebuild him. Why they were able to put him back together and he was fine and Optimus turn gray. I don't know. I don't know. You just got to enjoy the movie for what it is and forget about the stuff that don't quite work. Uh, but yeah, Ultra Magnus. I, I can remember when he got the Matrix from Optimus, as sad as I was about Optimus. Even as a kid, I was like, you know what? I, I think at least Magnus makes sense. And then it didn't. the Matrix didn't work for him and he got taken out and we got Rodimus Prime. And I was like, oh, that's disappointing. I was never a Rodimus guy though. Maybe you are. Um, I always thought that Magnus fit the role of leader and the fact that as leader, as Matrix Bearer, he got taken out was kind of disappointing and took the wind into my sails for believing in this guy as leader. Nevertheless, Magnus would go on to prove himself as a very um, worthy city commander through season three. Nevertheless, there was that time that Ultra Magnus was torn to bits. In fact, the upcoming commander class um, studio series offering of Ultra Magnus will actually be able to have the arms and legs and whatnot come off a la the 86 movie. Yeah, the dismemberment of Ultra Magnus takes the number seven slot. Number six may be the passing on this list that had the most purpose and it's Armada Starscream. Uh, toward the end of Armada Starscream became actually quite heroic realizing that the threat that was uh, Unicron is something that would cause or have to cause the Autobots and the Decepticons to unite in order to beat it. Uh, so much so that he knew that Galvatron was going to be very blind to what was happening and he challenged him to a duel and really bested him. He had come so far as a warrior and you know what? He probably could have finished off the Decepticon leader but he hesitated. He got ran through uh, by um, Galvatron or Megatron, whichever one he was by then, Galvatron, I think, uh, using the Star Saber. And in kind of his dying moments, he fired upon Starscream, fired upon Unicron. Unicron kind of obliterated him into ash and dust. But it was enough to make the two leaders of the two factions, the Autobots and the Decepticons, realize that Unicron is a real threat and we will have to work together if we're going to stop him. The heroic Starscream is the reason that the Transformers in Armada all finally became one. 
a death with a purpose. You've got to respect it. And enough fans feel it's impactful enough that it was able to take the number six slot. Now here we are at the ever popular, ever coveted halfway mark. And at the halfway mark today, we have one that honestly would have been my vote if I voted on these. It wouldn't be fair for me to vote on these. Uh, this one still haunts me to this day. And we recently got this character in a Buzzworthy Bumblebee 2 pack. It is Prowl. This is the regular Prowl with some custom work done. Um, I've been debating if I want to get the 2 pack or not with the damage and the, you know, the face that he has, that horrific haunting face that he has just before his eyes turn color and that orange smoke plumes out of his mouth. To this day, that sticks with me. Of all of the Transformers who have come and gone across all of the various fictions, his death face is the one that sticks with me the most and it stuck with enough fans that Prowl got enough votes to solidify himself at the number five slot. Top four most impactful deaths in Transformers lore takes us to a tie. A tie between G1 and the live action movie by way of Ironhide. I really didn't know how to call this. I could have taken up two slots um, and separated them, but it, it's a pure tie. They got the exact same number. Uh, and honestly, whichever one you voted for could have fit in here. I don't have a, a version of the um, movie Ironhide. I'm sorry, unfortunately. But movie Ironhide, of course, as we all know in Dark of the Moon, was taken out uncere unceremoniously by Sentinel Prime. And while we knew the Sentinel was somewhat desperate and the pillars and he was somewhat dubious, I don't think anybody actually expected that man he was going to do a full-on heel turn, if you know wrestling terms, full-on heel turn that would begin with the unceremonious dismissal of Ironhide from life. Um, it, was, it was rough, it was shocking, and I don't think anyone saw it coming, which probably is why it was so impactful. As for G1, even when the assault happened on the shuttle, a lot of people figured, man, Ironhide, if nobody else, Ironhide will be able to stop them. And we all know Megatron standing on top of Ironhide with his fusion cannon pointed, pointed down and that classic line, such heroic nonsense, before presumably blasting his cranial unit away to pieces, dust, whatever you want to call it. Ironhide might be one of the toughest Decepticons across all fiction, but boy, oh boy, when, when a Decepticon, or anyone I suppose for that matter, decides that it's time to take Iron, Ironhide out, they do so with extreme prejudice. Dark of the Moon slash G1 Ironhide, whether due to Sentinel Prime or Megatron, Ironhide takes the number four slot. Now I'm not going to lie, the top three are all very close in votes. Number three ended up losing some traction later in the game, but the top two super duper close. Before time, number three was ranking as number one. Didn't last, but number three is none other than another Starscream. This being the um, G1 Starscream. I, 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 <laughs> I suppose you could say the 86 Starscream. Um, you know, the dude had just become Decepticon leader. He just had his coronation. And then, man, oh man, you want to talk about the revenge of Megatron slash Galvatron. You want to talk about someone who goes after, you know, someone that they really, they probably had an axe to grind against for a long time. And this was it. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. You know, Megatron, is that you? Here's a hint. Right? The, the whole, this is bad comedy. We know the scene. And we know that there as he stood with his crown and his cape and his shoulder pads, he gets reduced to ash thanks to the particle beam cannon of Galvatron. A lot of people thought that Starscream would last forever, but even in death, he was still sinister. Because while the physical body might be gone, that immortal spark, that indestructible spark, would live on as a ghost until he finally got his body back from Unicron. What a wild ride for Starscream. Always finds a way to survive, even in death. Starscream from the movie takes the number three slot. Top two, and remember number one and number two are separated by one vote. Uh, they were dueling the whole way to the very bitter end for who would take number one, and I, I couldn't predict it either, but number two is none other than Beast Wars Dinobot. Um, we've talked about Dinobot before and his amazing character arc from being a very gruff and vicious Predacon to becoming a Maximal, to kind of feeling like he doesn't really fit in or belong because he's still a Predacon. To 
saving all of humanity and sacrificing himself in the process. The legend of Dinobot lives on, and everything else is silence. Fans felt that his death was impactful enough that it was able to take the number two slot. Tippy top number one, a lot of people predicted, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't go along with the prediction because this character and Dinobot were so neck and neck the whole time. It could have gone either way if not for one, one vote. And number one is Optimus Prime. G1 Optimus Prime. Um, here's what's interesting though. The votes for Optimus came in twofold. Uh, first, for the movie, of course, right? Where Optimus was uh, uh, taken out in his battle with Megatron, and we all know that that scene where he passes the Matrix and he turns gray. But we know by the end of season three, he comes back to life. Some people who voted for Optimus said, uh, his death a few episodes later in Headmasters was even worse because like, he ran in, I can't remember if it was to save Vector Sigma or lock Vector Sigma. It was something to do with Vector Sigma. I don't remember the details right now, but like he ran in kind of knowing full well, like I'm going to have to sacrifice myself. I, I, this got to be done if we're going to like stop the Decepticons. Like he went in knowing what he was going to do. The ultimate hero, the ultimate father figure, and his passing is something that leaves a, a, a a lot of trauma and a large hole in a lot of people's hearts because he's not just a toy. He's not just a transformer. He's a beloved character that sticks in the hearts and minds of many a fan. G1 Optimus Prime takes the number one slot. Who else had votes? A number of uh, characters had votes. IDW Mirage Huffer. Um, 86 Ratchet, one that doesn't get mentioned enough. Sky Quake, who was mentioned earlier. Um, G1 Megatron, uh, one person voted for G1 Megatron and said, well, he died because Galvatron was a, you know, was a different character. When uh, I said I'll count it, but I didn't think it was going to get traction. Um, um, Optimus Primal, I don't remember Optimus Primal dying, but okay. Um, who else? Bay vs. Ratchet and Age of Extinction thanks to Lockdown. Yeah, that was a hard one to watch, I'm not going to lie. Rise of the Beast Bumblebee. Spoiler. Um, Rise of the Beast Scourge. 07. Spoiler. 07 Jazz. Uh, Tiger Hawk. Inferno. Um, in the Legacy of Unicron. I don't know that. Pterosaur, the way he kind of melted into lava. Uh, Cyberverse Soundwave. Rhinox Tankor. Brawn. Um, G1 Soundwave and G1 Blaster. Turn, um, Baver Sentinel Prime, Transformers Prime, Optimus Prime, when he became one with the Allspark once again. Um, Baver Starscream, I mean, it's Starscream, and he got taken out by Sam Witwicky. Come on. Um, Unicron, uh, Animated Prowl, that was a sad one too. Uh, Wheeljack, I like to think he's still alive. Uh, Animated Blur, IDW Rewind. Prime Megatron, who I did kind of talk about a little bit earlier, animated Starscream and his multiple deaths. Um, Armada Optimus Prime, when he sort of explodes. Um, um, G2 Fort Max, I thought that was an interesting one. Wind Charger, The Fallen, that was a good one. Kickback, whose head gets kind of squished. I like to think that's one of the insect the clones. Uh, Vector Prime. Um, Earth Spark Agent Croft, and just for funsies, G1 Dion. Them and even more, I appreciate you guys coming by, giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we have to offer you through Spring or Course. Join button at any given time and become a channel member. Don't forget to please hit the subscribe button and especially remember that somehow, someway, each and every single solitary day, you right there, you do make a difference in the world. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way right here inside the videos.